Hi students and welcome to this lecture. This is the second part of functions. In this lecture we will study about inverse of functions, how to find the range and domain of a function, properties and nature of odd and even functions and some very special functions. Now this lecture is going to give a more clear picture of what functions are and a better understanding of some very useful concepts through solved examples. So let's begin. Let's start this lecture with the study of inverse of functions. Now what are inverse of functions? If a function f from a to b is a 1 1 and onto function, then there exists a unique function g from b to a such that fx is equal to y or we can say that g of y is equal to x. That is, we can express x in terms of y or as a function of y. Then such a function of y is called as the inverse of f. Your g is called the inverse of f denoted by g equal to f inverse from b to a. Now such a function is denoted by f inverse. Once again, if a function f from a to b is 1 1 and on to function, then there is a function g from b to a such that fx is equal to y or g of y is equal to x. That is, x can be expressed in terms of y. So g is equal to f inverse and from b a. Very important thing to note is the condition for an inverse function to exist is that f must be a bijective function. Now what is a bijective function? Bijective function is a function which is 1 1 and on to at the same time. So the important condition is that f must be a bijective function. Now let us say that a is a set the elements of which are 0 1 2 and 3 and b is a set the elements of which are 0 3 6 9. Now let us define a function from a to b given by fx equal to 3 times x. Now fx is a bijective function. Why? Because we see that when we put the values of these elements 0 1 2 3 we get the values 0 3 6 9. Hence we can clearly see that it is a 1 1 function plus on to because the range is equal to the codomain of this function f. Hence, this becomes a bijective function. Therefore, this is the set A, the elements of which are 0, 1, 2, 3 and this is the set B, the elements of which are 0, 3, 6, 9. Now, we see that 0 maps to 0, 1 maps to 3, 2 maps to 6 and 3 maps to 9. Now, this denotes the function f. Now, f inverse is we take the set B here and set A. Now, we see that 0 maps to 0, 3 maps to 1, 6 maps to 2 and 9 maps to 3. So, f inverse is denoted this way. Now, f is equal to 0, 0, 1, 3, 2, 6, 3, 9 where this is x and this is y. So, f inverse becomes equal to the set 0, 0, 3, 1, 6, 2, 9, 3. Now, what do we observe from this? We clearly observe that domain of f is equal to range of f inverse and the range of f is equal to the domain of f inverse because your domain is the set B and the set B is nothing but the range of F and also we see that here A is the range of F inverse which is actually the domain of F so domain of F is equal to range of F inverse and the range of F is equal to domain of F inverse now students let's solve an example if a function F is defined from 1 comma infinity to 1 comma infinity that is the domain is 1 comma infinity including 1 and the codomain is 1 comma infinity is defined by fx equal to 2 to the power x into x minus 1 then f inverse is so in this problem we have been given the domain and the codomain of the function f and we have to find the f inverse the function fx is given by 2 to the power x into x minus 1 and we have been given the four options option number a is 1 by 2 to the power x into x minus 1 option number b is 1 by 2 into 1 plus under root of 1 plus 4 times log x to the base 2 option number c is 1 by 2 into 1 minus under root of 1 plus 4 times log of x to the base 2 and option number d is not defined so given that y is equal to 2 to the power x into x minus 1 here the condition is y should be greater or equal to 1 and x should be greater or equal to 1 because the codomain is given by y and 
that is greater or equal to 1 and similarly the domain is x greater or equal to 1 now what we do is we take log 2 on both sides so we get log y to the base 2 equal to x into x minus 1 this gets further reduced to x square minus x minus log y to the base 2 equal to 0 now this is a quadratic equation so we get two values of x as x equal to 1 plus minus under root of 1 plus 4 times log y to the base 2 whole divided by 2 so we get two values of x from this expression now we know that y is greater than 1 so as long as y is greater than 1 we have log y to the base 2 greater than 0 or 1 plus 4 times log y to the base 2 would be greater or equal to 1 now if 1 plus 4 times log y to the base 2 is greater or equal to 1 then minus of under root 1 plus 4 times log y to the base 2 is less than equal to minus 1 so now this expression if we put a minus sign here then we get x less than 0 and which is not possible because x should be greater or equal to 1 thus we can ignore this root which is x equal to 1 by 2 into 1 minus under root 1 plus 4 log y to the base 2 as this is not possible because x should be greater or equal to 1 therefore the value of x becomes x equal to 1 by 2 into 1 plus under root of 1 plus 4 times log y to the base 2 or we can write as f inverse x equal to 1 by 2 into 1 plus under root of 1 plus 4 times log x to the base 2 hence we can say that option number b is correct now let's try to understand how to draw the graph of inverse function now this is the coordinate plane and this is the x and y axis this line is y equal to x now let us say that any point on the graph is x comma fx so when we put the value of x we get the point as fx so this is any point on the curve y equal to fx now this point is fx comma x and this is a point on f inverse now we see that the line segment joining the points x comma fx and fx comma x is bisected at right angle by the line y equal to x this is the line which bisects this line and at right angle 